Born in a small coal mining town in Ohio, Arthur G. James was the third child of Italian immigrant parents. His father was a coal miner who later operated a grocery store. Arthur attended a two-room school in the mining camp and from age eight helped his parents in the store after school, stocking shelves, sweeping floors, and delivering groceries. Arthur was still in elementary school when his mother fell ill. The doctor who treated her took an interest in the young boy and made him, made him take the time to talk about medicine. At his father's insistence, Arthur took college preparatory courses in high school, still working in his parents' store, delivering groceries with, groceries with a horse and wagon, and later with an old Ford pickup truck. He shared class valedictorian honors when he graduated in 1930 and easily won a scholarship to Ohio State University. He did lab work during the summers to help pay his expenses as a pre-med student. During his internship at the University of Chicago, he worked under a surgeon who limited his practice to cancer patients. I wanted to be a surgeon, and I was impressed by what he was doing, says Dr. James. After the war, he completed his training at Sloan Kettering and returned to Ohio State to accept a position as assistant professor in the Department of Surgery. Rising to the rank of chief of the Division of Surgical Oncology, Dr. James continued his crusade to build a cancer hospital on the campus of Ohio State. In 1980 and 1981, the Ohio State Legislature passed a $40 million appropriation and ground was broken for this hospital two years later. Throughout the building process, Dr. James, as the first medical director, has been intensely involved. I worked with architects to help design it, and now I'm in the process of finding the staff to run it. It's a real privilege to ask Dean W. Jeffers to present the Horatio Alger Award, Dean Jeffers of the class of 1975, to Dr. Arthur G. James. Thank you very much, Mr. O'Malley, Mr. Dean Jeffers. Ladies and gentlemen, my wife, Mildred, is the lady in pink, mid part of the table, and you met her when she first came in and was introduced at that time. In a table just in front is a group of the remainder of the family, which includes four tremendous grandchildren and other friends. And I'd like for them to stand for a second. Thank you. I would also especially like to recognize and introduce Dr. Manuel Sergernis, Dean of the College of Medicine and Vice President of Health Services at Ohio State University. <clears throat> thank you. I wish to sincerely thank the Horatio Alger Association for this very prestigious award. I cannot imagine anyone honestly feeling worthy of such an honor especially when one learns of the many contributions of the others. I feel comfortable accepting it, however, in the memory of my parents, whose ideals, philosophy, and self-sacrifice motivated me to obtain the necessary background education. As you've heard, my parents were Italian immigrants who came to America early in the 1900s. They settled in a small mining community in eastern Ohio and eventually had a family of eight children. The hardships in Italy caused them to more fully appreciate the opportunities America offered. Although he had very low schooling and as a laborer earned comparatively little, my dad insisted 
that all these children be educated. When my dad and I visited the principal on entering high school, I was asked whether I wanted to pursue a commercial course or a college preparatory course. My dad spoke up, and to my surprise, and in his best dialect English, said, he's uh, gonna go to college. <laughs> in college, I worked in the cafeteria for my meals and was awarded a scholarship which helped to cover registration fees. My point R ratio in college was 3.7 of a total four point, and I had no difficulty entering medical school. In the summers between my medical school years, I worked in a laboratory for extra money and also earned a master's degree in medical science. And also, as you heard from Mr. O'Malley, while interning at the University of Chicago just 50 years ago, I was so impressed by Dr. Brunswick's work in cancer that I chose to follow in that field. After my general surgical residency and four years of Army service, I completed a two-year fellowship in cancer teaching, training rather, at the Sloan Kettering Memorial Hospital in New York City. I was much impressed with what they accomplished for the cancer patient. Shortly after returning to the Ohio State University, the idea occurred to me that we should have a similar hospital in Ohio. After all, there wasn't one in that vast area between New York State and Texas. During the past 30 years, we tried many ways to raise the necessary money and met with just about as many roadblocks. And finally, the governor of Ohio and the legislature agreed to appropriate the necessary $40 million for this cancer hospital and research institute. Ground was broken on July 10, 1984, and one now sees an impressive 12-story building which will soon be ready for operation. At present, we can cure less than 50% of all who develop cancer. During my professional life, I've seen a lot of good results, but I've also seen much anguish, sorrow, pain, and suffering in those who could not be cured. It is truly a damnable disease. Cancer research is the only hope for the millions with incurable cancer at present. Cancer research will be the most important function in our new Cancer Institute. Hopefully, this facility will play a very important part in the total eradication of this horrible disease. Thank you again.